I'd like you to meet Tim Matheson and Catherine Hicks. They have a brand new show on 1011 Strong. We don't know what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're trying to call it The Good the Witch, Witch of, of Laurel Canyon. Canyon. That's what it was called. And now it'll be called something else that no one quite knows yet, the title. Something to be more reflective of what the story is, which is we play a husband and wife, detective team, mm -hmm. and uh, Catherine has uh, special magic powers. Inherited little, from her grandmother, a little bit of psychic little stuff. psychic Not power. cutesy, bewitched, but... But the, the strange thing is, her powers don't always work. Right. She doesn't know if she can rely on it. It gets her into a little bit of difficulty. Now, if you're a witch, you must have a cat. Is anybody allergic? <laughs> I, no, I'm allergic to cats. Are you serious? Are you ser no, I'm serious. Oh, yeah, the first photo session. Oh, my. First photo session. Oh. And in the show, I'm supposed to be allergic to the cat. So he sneezes in the show, but in reality... <laughs> wow. I'm just thinking gonna, about it. How are you going to handle it? I mean, will the cat be around a lot? Uh, no, not that much. I, I, you know, you just deal with it. They're going to try to give me shots that will counteract it, this particular oh, cat's really? dandruff. See what you have to go through to be an actor? Oh, Ouch. the Shots. price one must have to pay. <laughs> it's a tough life. Oh, <laughs> but obviously you love it. Yeah, we do. You saw her as Marilyn Monroe in an untold story, nominated for an Emmy yeah. Award. The makeup they did oh. was, was really... <laughs> not that you're not pretty. Not that you're not pretty, but you really look like Marilyn. What kind of research did you have to do, Catherine? For that? Uh, well, I had done the play after the fall in acting school, so I, I had done research for that. Basically, Norman Mailey's picture book. But for the, the, I had it all in me when Marilyn came along. But I did look at the a documentary over and over again to try to figure out psychologically why she maintains such a girl-like voice. A little know, tiny, tiny voice? Tiny, tiny child. Uh, and I, I learned through the uh, documentary that it's because of her mother abandoning her. Uh, she stopped progress progressing at age seven because that's when her mom's left. What do you feel about her death? Because I know you, you did the research and you must have looked and thought and studied. What did you feel about the death? The death? Um, I felt she o always wanted to die. Um, I don't think maybe n not that night she said, tonight I'm going to commit suicide, but she was so far into it that she just went over the edge. No one was surprised because she had been so heavily into barbiturates. Do you think she was a good actress? Yeah, I think she was an excellent, superb comedian, a great comedian. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, Bus Stop is certainly, if it mm -hmm. had been performed today, she would be nominated for an Oscar. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't taken seriously enough, and it was like, oh, Marilyn's in another turkey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've seen this guy. Remember him? A I've, few I've years always ago. loved him. <laughs> did, did, you, did you watch him on My Three Sons and Leave It to Beaver? I didn't, did I didn't know about Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> Beaver's dad died not too long oh, ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hugh Beaumont was yeah. his name, right. In real life. Yeah. You've got quite a history. I started acting as a kid, yes. Isn't he cute? <laughs> 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 well, he's been 1941, a little sex, animal house. You've made the ropes, kiddo. <laughs> he's a movie star. <laughs> he's a mo you're, you're acting now with a movie star it was going to be a good sneezer. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on things. my allergic reaction. <laughs> and uh, Tim, Tim is also into Shakespeare. He does a lot of Shakespeare. Uh -huh. Shakespeare. Yeah, How yeah. do you make Shakespeare palatable? <laughs> well, um, it's great. I don't, um, I think the emotions are all the same. I mean, emo human emotions don't change, whether it's something 400 years old or something that's just being done today, you know, or written today. And he was perhaps the greatest writer who ever lived. And he knew, understood more about the human condition, I think, than any other writer. So that if uh, you do your research and you understand what the situation is uh, that, that you're uh, involved in. The last play I did was Taming of the Shrew, which is, it's a wonderful play. It's a lot of fun. And really, I think the thing is to find the theme that relates to what's happening in, say, contemporary society and how it relates to contemporary society. And that way, the people will understand it. Marital rift. Yeah, right. The, diff the battle between the sexes. I mean, because yeah. it's... it's uh, Have you done any Shakespeare? Nope. Because, you see, the, the language is unwieldy, needless to say. So it's the job of the actor up, to try yeah. to, you know, to how do you make the person in the little last, the little old lady in the last row, really understand the words? You know what it is? If you really commit to the emotion, 
And you know what you're saying. And can communicate it. Then somebody will say, it may not understand every word. Now, if you know what you're saying, they will feel what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You feel what you're feeling, and then they'll understand it. It's not really about, like, a glossary to figure out what all the words are for the audience. You know I mean? They'll get the general idea. The rosy-fingered Don <laughs> crept. And crept up over the hills of, you know, it's one Penny pace from day to day to the last syllable. Were you an syllable. actress, sir? Did yeah, you yeah. Heard? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you do Shakespeare? Oh, Taming of the Shrew. That's one of my biggies. Isn't yes, my master's great? thesis. Really? Shakespeare. Shakespeare prepares an act. An actor prepares five of Shakespeare's women. Marvelous. So I took I took all the Shakespeare's, and we did them. We we just edited them down into five little performances. Oh, great. Yeah. So no, I have quite a history in, in Shakespeare, and I love it. But some of the little supernumeraries sometimes were unable, as you say, to really understand yeah. the language to be able to communicate it. N so. Nebraska has a rep company, doesn't it? Yes, the University of Nebraska is a very fine theater department. Yeah. We, we produce some, some very good things. That's, that's great. Yes. Better than Broadway, I'm sure. Well, well. <laughs> I mean, there's well, nothing listen, around Catherine, it. If the Good Witch of Laurel Canyon doesn't make it, yes. we're hoping that it will. We'll we're on opposite fingers. dynasty. Come to Lincoln. You two can be in our rep theater at the University of Nebraska. Even if it does make it, it, it does come make it, some please come. In the summertime. Yes, summer. yes, yes, yes. Do okay. a lot of shows. Okay, would you do that? Yeah. Sure. Good luck in the series. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck to you. Catherine You're Hicks, thank you very much. And Tim Madison, delightful. Okay, Thanks. we got to go now, but we'll be back. 10-11 morning continues. <laughs>